Alhamdulillah, today is very special to us. The date is tomorrow, but because we haven't got another opportunity for to, to converge, you know, except today. Tomorrow, the 28th of February, will be the 27th day of Rajab, the day that has special significance, that is the night journey and ascension of the Prophet where the Prophet was invited to visit Almighty Allah. Inshallah, some of us who are unable to attend the physical Salatu are already coming on, on Zoom and uh, you have the opportunity again to watch us live for non-members via our Facebook platforms as well as our YouTube uh, platform. All is going online, including our Instagram page, inshallah. Today, we have for the Latutay Sheikh, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad Muttazir. Inshallah, we all know our Sheikh, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad Muttazir. Abdul Hafiz Muhammad Muttazir was born in India in the province called Kinshankach. <laughs> Kinshankach, I think I get it. Bihar. He completed his Ifsul Quran. That is, he has the opportunity to be blessed to memorize the whole Quran. Can we say Allah Akbar? Can we say Allah Akbar? Uh -huh. and secondary school education in India. Thereafter, he graduated from Damascus in Munjaman Abu Nur and Al Fatah Institute in Syria in Arabic and Islamic studies. And he holds a master's degree in Islamic studies from Lockdown University, United Kingdom. Okay? He worked previously as an Arabic and Quran teacher at Mujaman Abu Nur. is presently the head of religion studies at the Fig Tree Primary School in Nottingham and is the director of short adult courses at Caribbean Institute, Nottingham, UK. He is also volunteering to support Damatu Alilahi even from where we started as NASFA, he has always been our teacher, taking our children on supplementary Arabic classes on Sundays to support whatever they have learned in their various uh, institutions, private madrasas between Monday and Friday. I welcome for the latter Abla Fiz Mutazel onto the podium. Can we say La ilaha illa Allah? 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everyone. Inshallah. Thank you very much to invite me today to talk on the topic al Isra wal Maraj today as we are in the month of Rajam. So thank you for Sheikh Abdul Hakim to give me this opportunity to talk inshallah on that topic. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilman wa amalan mutakabbalan ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin umana adawatih wa qadat alwiyatih wa da'anna wa anhum ya rabbal alameen Today inshallah we are going to talk about the journey of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-isra wa al-mi'raj which is the night journey and the ascension so, I'm going to introduce you first what is Al Isra means, what is Al Mi'raj. There's two words in this and two journeys as well. Al Isra in the Arabic language is to walk at night. Al Mi'raj is the ascension from the verb Araja to climb and go high and high. So, the first part of the journey was the Al-Isra, walking at night from Kaaba to Masjid Al-Aqsa. And the second part was Mi'raj, the ascension. Al-Isra is mentioned in the Quran, but the Mi'raj is not directly the word Mi'raj is mentioned in the Quran, in the Ahadith. But in Surah Al-Najm, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala indicates about the Mi'raj journey. And the word Isra is mentioned in the Quran. So I would like to start the talk from the Surah Isra. It's called Surah Isra or Surah Bani Isra'id. It's from the beginning of the Surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Subhana alladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير. This is the verse Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says here about the Isra, the night journey of the Prophet. Glory be to Allah, the one who took his noble servant from Masjid al Haram. Masjid al-Aqsa. Then what is there in Masjid al-Aqsa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we have surrounded with blessing and barakah in that area and that mosque, Masjid al-Aqsa. Allah is talking about that. So before I proceed my talk further after the introduction is the journey of al-Isra wal Mi'raj. I would like because we have some children here as well so i want to show you some pictures 
Anybody can tell me which mosque is this? Yes? Fatiha? Yes? Which mosque? Try. Try. You're right or wrong answer. Medina, yes. Masjid al Nabawi in Medina. Okay? Very good. This one everybody should know what. Which is this one, Fahama? Yes. Makkah, the Kaaba. Okay? This is the Kaaba. And what is this one? Which mosque is this? The boys. Anybody knows this right, mosque? Right. No? Okay, we'll leave for now, if you don't know. Let us go to the other mosque. Yes. Anybody knows this mosque as well? Anybody? This mosque. Okay. Now this is Masjid Al-Aqsa. One of them. Which one you will choose? Which one will choose the Masjid Al-Aqsa? This one? This. You choose this one. Yes. Not this one. No. Okay. You are right, but the answer is wrong. <laughs> Why you are right? Because you always see this on the TV. Okay. The real mosque of Aqsa is this one. It's quite big. 5,000 or more people can pray in that mosque. And this masjid was built later on. This is called the Dome of the Rock Masjid or Masjid Qubbatu Sahra, where the Prophet وسلم, went to seven heaven. This was the Miraj part from, from this place. This is the same uh, place around the Masjid Al-Aqsa, but a little bit far away where the Prophet وسلم, tied his burak with the rock. So that's why the, the rock is the, uh, and that's why it's named the Dome of the Rock Masjid. So that is very, very important to recognize the real Masjid Al-Aqsa. Okay, so which one is the Masjid Al-Aqsa? So that is very important. Uh, for us. That's why I thought I will make that one because when I teach in classes everybody that golden tomb they say this is the Masjid Al-Aqsa. It is not. So we are coming back to our uh, Al-Isra Wal-Mi'raj journey. To understand Al-Isra Wal-Mi'raj journey, it is very important to understand the background of the journey. Without understanding the background of the journey, we can't understand the journey itself. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of the journey, then the journey itself, then the outcome of the journey we are going to talk. What was the outcome of the journey? The background of the journey, as we know, the Prophet ﷺ was born in Makkah, lived all his life in Makkah until 40 years. And up to 40 years, he was the best person for everyone. And his title was As-Sadiq Al-Ameen, the truthful and the trustworthy. After that, as soon as he got the revelation and he started his mission, his dawah, calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people became very angry. They became his greatest enemies. Most of them. Very few who believed in him. He tried to invite them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they did not listen. They started to torture him. And those who believed in him. All the ways possible they could do, they tried. But the Prophet ﷺ did not stop. Finally, they came to Abu Talib, his uncle, to ask him to stop his nephew for inviting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they gave very generous offer that we can make him the king if he want to be the king. If he wants to be wealthy, we will collect so much wealth for him. 
If you want to marry a woman, we can give the most beautiful one. If you want to be the leader, we do not do anything except him. Whatever he will say, we'll do that. So Abu Talib requested his nephew that the Quraysh came to me and he showed his weakness that he is old man now. I can't help you that much now. So these are the offers. The Prophet وسلم, realized that. And he said, Wallahi, by Allah, if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon is my left hand to stop this dawah, this mission, I'm not going to stop. Then Abu Talib realized that he is very strong, very firm in his mission, his dawah. Therefore, he said, my nephew, you go and do whatever you need to do. I am with you and I will support you. Then after that, the Quraysh, when they realized that they can't stop him, then they decided to boycott. They decided to put sanction on Prophet and the believers and his family. They put them in a valley and they made that contract and written and put on the door of the Kaaba that nobody is allowed to buy, sell any kind of dealing with these people. And because of that, it was very difficult time. Three years they stayed on that situation. They started to eat the leaves, bones, a lot of people died. That is the hardship. After this, he lost two of his greatest supporters as well. His uncle Abu Talib was died after this uh, boycott. And his wife Khadija radiallahu anha died after that as well. And he was very sad. And this year he himself classified as a year of sorrow and sadness. Amul Huzn. We say the Prophet visited upon him said this is Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow for me. And we can imagine that these two people after those hardship and difficulties these two people he spent time with them, very precious time he spent with them. And also, he was with both of them for very long time. As we know, he was born without a father. The father died before he was born. He was born as an orphan. Then, six years of age, the mother died. Then go to the care of the grandfather. Eight years of age, the grandfather died. Then he went to the care of his uncle Abu Talib. Since he was eight. And he lived with him until his mission started, the 40 years. And after that as well. So it's long time. Since he was eight, Formally, he came into his care and he himself got him married in 25 years old. And then now he was 40. Up to the revelation time, how many years was? 32 years. And we are talking this incident happening uh, before the Mehraj journey in the same year. So the Mehraj journey was happened three years before the Hijra migration or some scholar says 18 months before the migration. And up to the migration we took in the Hijra in the beginning of the Islamic year that the Hijra was took place after 13 years of the revelation. 13 years. So at least 10 years we are talking about in here after the revelation. So the Prophet وسلم, approximately 42 years lived with his uncle. And if you lost that person, you have great sadness. And so was Khadija radiallahu anha. 
when he was 24 uh, years old he got married to khadija radiyallahu anha and in 40 years he took the revelation so it's 15 years here then at least 10 years 25 years of togetherness so it's very difficult when we lost when we have lost this kind of people from our life so it's very very sad then finally he tried to go and seek some help and support and this is the first time in his life he's going out of Mecca to call people to Islam he did call people in Mecca he did not go out and this is the first time he made an effort and went there and he thought because he has some relatives there as well that they will help and support him as well so the first time he decided to go there to invite them to Islam and it is very very interesting as well that that was the first city the Prophet ﷺ went to call them and that was the last city to enter to Islam in that uh, area However, the visit of Taif wasn't very pleasant, very hard, very difficult. Because the people of Taif completely rejected him. Not only rejected him, they put behind him the bad young people, the servant, the slaves, throw stones. His blessed sandal was full of blood because of the injuries. And when he was coming back, you can see that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Uma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. When he was coming in that situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel and Islam to him to tell him that Allah knows what happened to you. And the angel of the mountains with me here. If you command, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy all of them by crushing the mountains to them. But the Prophet said, No, I do not want that. He said, This is my people, they don't know. There is a lesson for us in here that if somebody harmed you, said you bad words, did bad things. Are you able to forgive and say this, that this is my people, but they don't know me. Rather than he returned and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And he did a very, very beautiful dua. I put in my dua book that dua as well. I think you know all uh, of you the my dua book. He said, Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati. وقلة حيلتي وهواني على الناس يا أرحم الراحمين أنت رب المستضعفين وأنت ربي إلى من تكلني إلى بعيد يتجهمني أم إلى عدو ملكته أمري إن لم يكن بك غضب علي فلا أبالي ولكن عافيتك هي أوسع لي أعوذ بنور وجهك الذي أشرقت له الظلمات وصلها عليه أمر الدنيا والآخرة من أن تنزل بي غضبك أو يحل علي سخطك لك العصبة حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك So this is the dua the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was making and saying I complain to you for my weakness O Allah سبحانه وتعالى and you are the Rahmur Rahimin. And that's the that was goes, you can read the translation there. So he came back after that. He made that dua. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, was watching all these. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seen that the Prophet is sad. He lost his uncle, he lost his wife, he lost his followers. People are rejecting. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now wanted him to welcome. Wanted him to show that look, 
if the inhabitants of the earth rejecting you the inhabitants of the heavens welcoming you i'm going to ask the people of the heavens welcoming you receiving you you come and see therefore he called his servant for this journey of mi'raj that therefore the journey happened that journey was for peace for tranquility for comfort for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after this all hardship and to give him the strength the quwa and to show him that was unseen for him so far we see in the, the in the journey that he saw the jannah he saw the hell fire the punishment in the in the hell fire the bounties in the jannah he saw all he saw the prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the previous prophet each heaven one prophet was welcoming him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent jibril alayhi salam with a ride and the ride name is called bura and this was explained is bigger than the donkey and smaller than the horse is a creature with two wings we have a board here you can see some people thought about that like that the animal will be so that is the bura animal is very fast going so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith about that journey ataitu bil bura wa huwa dabbatun abyad this is a white animal tawilun is tall fawq al himari wa dun al baghl is more than the donkey and uh, is uh, smaller than the horse yadaw hafirahu inda muntaha tarafihi qal that he put his leg from one side to the other side and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qal fa rakibtuhu hatta ataitu bait al maqdis say i rode on that and i came to bait al maqdis with that with the al qudus al masjid al aqsa in palestine in jerusalem where he said dan farabattuhu bil halaqat allati yarbitu biha al anbiya thumma dakhaltu al masjid fa sallaytu fihi rak'atayn thumma kharajtu fa ja'ani jibril bi inayn min khamr wa inayn min laban fa akhtartu al laban fa qala jibril akhtartu al fitra thumma araja bina ila al sama the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the long hadith the long long hadith he is he told us about the journey but is part of that uh, uh, i'm quoting here only then he said i went with the bura and i put and tied up i i showed the uh, i showed you the place where he tied up that was the uh, uh, masjid al qubbat al sakhra in here in that place of course it wasn't mosque there later on it was been so there is another question here this bura came for the prophet to take him from masjid al haram to masjid al aqsa and he said i tied the bura when i reached in masjid al aqsa is the bura going to run away <laughs> came for the prophet huh? why he did that the bura will wait for him and <laughs> to be right for him but he tied up <coughs> this is a lesson for us as well should you that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written everything for us it does not mean we stay seated in our place and the things will come to us you need to take the means that, that this world works as cause and effect that you have to do the work then you can have the result the wages without working he can't that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did he tied up he knew that is this burak is not going to go anywhere this burak is here for him to take him to the seven heaven but he did that then he said i prayed two rakat in in uh, masjid al aqsa in that place and jibril came 
and he presented to me a cup of wine and a cup of leaven, milk, two things to choose. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Akhtartu Laban. I chose the milk. Then Jibreel said, Akhtartu al Fitrah. That you chose the natural things. The choice was very natural. Then he said, Summa Araja Bina ila Sama. Then the journey of the Mi'raj started from here. That was the Isra is finished. Then the journey of Mi'raj started from there. And the first heaven, the, the staircase, okay, started. The first heaven, Adam salam, was waiting for him to welcome. As I said earlier, the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show him that don't worry if they are rejecting you in the dunya, we are welcoming you. We are here for you. So Adam salam, in the first heaven was waiting for him. In the second heaven, Yahya alayhi salam. And the third one, Idris, Yusuf alayhi salam. Then Idris alayhi salam in the fourth one. And the fifth one, Harun alayhi salam. And sixth one was Musa alayhi salam. And the last one, the seventh one, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Was welcoming him. Everybody was giving him salam and saying to him, welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban. So everybody was welcoming him. So he went to with the Buraq, with Jibreel alayhi salam, the seventh heaven. Then he went beyond that, which is the Sidratul Muntaha. Beyond that, he went. And there is two narrations about that, that he so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with his naked eyes or, or he did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, what do you think? He's saw him. So yes. The Sahaba has the difference of opinion as well. That some says he saw and some other group of the Sahaba said he did not see but there was a veil between him and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only a curtain but they were very very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in that uh, journey. Now, in that journey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a precious gift to him as well. And that was the five daily prayers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. So, little bit detail in the five daily prayers as well. We will talk about that. But before that, I would like to uh, discuss some other point of the journey. Now, this journey was physical journey or happening dream. It's very, very important to know for us. Okay? What do you think? It is physical journey or in dream? Dream? <laughs> no. No. Yes. Yes. Why we are talking about that journey today? Why the Quraysh was talking about their journey at that point was a very big thing. And that was the test for the believers as well. Because when he came back, because now you can imagine, yes, somebody gone and came back, maybe he has a special aeroplane and came back. But that time you are talking about 1400 years ago is nothing. People can't comprehend this kind of things. If somebody said the same night he left Mecca, went to Jerusalem Masjid al-Aqsa from the seventh heaven and came back. So the journey was physical journey. It says Abdul Hakim, I went from here last night to America and met Biden, had lunch with him and came back. You bothered in his dream? No. He said you can go, Sheikh, wherever you want to go <laughs> in your dream and come back. Doesn't matter. Likewise, if the Prophet wasallam said, I went in dream, nobody will bother. Okay, they will say you can go anywhere you want in your dream. Doesn't matter. The journey was physical. And the evidence is in the Quran first, Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. The abd, abd is the slave, the servant. 
Abd, we do not say the soul only, the body and the soul. The Abd. You know, the, the, the olden days, they used to have the slaves. They, that is called Abd. Those who work for them. Slavery. You know the slavery? After that? So it's called Abd, the person who is a slave. So the Abd is the soul and the body. Then the other evidence, as I mentioned, that when he spoke about that journey, everybody was saying, how is possible? Because if in dream, nobody will say how is possible. And the Kuffar started to talk. And so many believers, this was the test for the believers as well. Some of the Sahaba was thinking, is it true? Is it possible? Thinking about it. Somebody believed, somebody did not believe. And the Quraysh, they were asking people. And they, and therefore they went to uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, started to ask him. If somebody said to you, he went there from Masjid al, from Kaaba to Masjid Al-Aqsa to, to, to Seven Heaven, do you believe? He said, I won't believe. Then he said, then they said, is your friend is saying this? <laughs> then he said, if he is saying, that he is saying the truth without any hesitation. Yeah. And the Prophet wasallam given him the title of Siddiq after this. When he said, if he is saying the thing, he is saying the truth. So that was the title was given as Siddiq. So this is the evidence that the journey was physical and the journey wasn't in dream. If it was in dream, there was no need for all this. And we won't maybe uh, celebrate and commemorate in this month of Rajab now about that journey. So that journey was one of the miracles of the Prophet as well, out of many, many miracles, Mojizat as well. So that was the physical journey and that was the test for the believers and non-believers as well. And for the believers that who is accepting this and who is not accepting that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given him that gift of the salah, the five daily prayers. Of course, it was it started from 50. Then Musa alayhi salam advised him that it will be so much for your people. Ask Allah to reduce. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked Allah to reduce. And it came to 10. Musa alayhi salam again told him that is so much your people can't do that. I'm talking to you because I have experience with Bani Israel, with my nation. That is too much. Then the Prophet gone again back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah did used to five times. And Musa alayhi salam was saying to him, still this is too much. The Prophet sallam, said, no, I am very shy now. I feel ashamed to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him to reduce more. I'm happy with this now. The five daily prayers. I'm happy with that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course heard the conversation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet peace be upon him that you and your ummah pray five times and the reward will be 50. Each prayer equals 10. Okay, when we pray five times, Allah will give the rewards for 50 times, 50 salah. And you know the legislation, we know the worldly term, legislations, the laws was passed in parliament, it's given and announced. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us lo loads, laws, isn't it? And those loans, those laws were given through Jibreel alayhi salam, the Quran. But this salah was given in there, in the seventh heaven, in the Sidrat al So you know the importance of this salah. That how important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to give him this salah. You know, even nowadays, some of the countries want to give some uh, letters or some instructions to the to the ambassador or something. They call the, the ambassador. And then they present the letter and tell them that these are the things we, we want. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give him these five daily prayers. To, to this five daily prayer, as I said, is not for the Prophet only sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's for all his believers. Now, we will go back to the journey a little bit. When 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him this journey to give him comfort, give him peace. And the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give him the certainty. Because Allah knew that you are going to migrate soon. And after the migration, you are going to have more hard time than you had before. You have to be ready. You have to be strong. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him his signs. Okay? His signs, Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him that don't worry. We are with you. Allah is with you. If nobody is listening to you, people rejecting you, but Allah is with you. End of the day, you will be the one who is the victorious person. You will be victorious all the time. But from now, what you will do? Go, I'm giving you this tool now. What, are, what is the tool? The Salah. The Salah is not only the prayers, the rituals. It is a Dua as well, isn't it? The Fatiha we did. The old Fatiha is the Dua. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him this tool. He said, from now on, if you need my closeness, if you need peace and comfort, if you need certainty, go and pray, you will find me. Therefore, he migrated and he, the Ghazwatul Badr, he did all the preparation, then he turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to his arish, to his tent, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the success of this 313 people. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that his people and the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will have difficult times as well. All of us will have difficult times. Then what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his companions, his sahaba and to us, as-salatu mi'rajul mu'mineen. The salah is the ascension of the believers, is mi'raj of the believers. As-salah. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to say to us, if you are in difficult time, any time you, you are in hardship, you think, you think is nobody is helping you and supporting you, turn back to Allah through the salah. Turn back to Allah and come and pray. And pray the way you should pray. What is the description of the prayer? Uh, the, the ibadah and the worship in the hadith of Jibreel the Prophet said أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك You pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is if you watching seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you if you can't get that status then the other status that you be in that position, that status, that Allah is watching you. Allah is watching you. One of the two status, no other status. So, you, you see this hadith is saying, As-salatu mi'rajul mu'mineen. As-salat is the mi'raj of the believer. But when we pray, we don't feel that, that we climb high and high. We are very up spiritually. Why? Because our salah is not in that position that should be. Our salah, we pray salah, me as well, not only you people. We count everything, where, where need to go, what need to do, which jobs, what, all those things. Shaitan brings to your mind. So if you leave everything, the dunya one side, and go and pray, then you will see that you will find that salah is the ascension. You climb higher and higher and you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the reason for the uh, salah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give this certainty, this peace, this comfort to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and call him to the seven heaven and the Sidratul Muntaha to show him his bounties and his blessing and wanted to give him that 
certainty and that is the outcome was for us that is the prayer that we need our miraj every day five times so try your best that you pray the salah in the way we should pray and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the blessings and barakah in our life may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our salah better and better may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ascension and the miraj in our salah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us to uh, take care about our salah try to do our salah on time may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the healing and shifa to all those people who are suffering any kind of disease in this world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the peace and tranquility to us and our families and the world as well may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the difficulties from us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the blessing and baraka to come here and do the zikr and remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i know it is not easy to to come every week and stay and listen to the uh, to to the uh, quran and the zikr and remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek religious knowledge is very very hard the society we are living in here and uh, sundays so mashallah you are doing a great work and the children mashallah doing great job as well they are learning the quran and the arabic as well and uh, i would like to thank you our brother abdul hakim for his great effort and uh, doing all this collecting all of you and encouraging you always encouraging me to come asking me to say sometimes some words to you as well so mashallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him long life good health inshallah lot of blessing and baraka and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his good deeds whatever he is doing for our community and for ourselves and for the the, the sake of the umma he is thinking about the umma after after us that's why the children classes that's why you people should be good then you can raise your children in good manner and in islam in deen so that is very very important in the society we are living where everywhere is material things very materialistic we are we completely forgotten allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are thinking and weighing things materially what i will get what will happen if i do this how much i get pain how much things will get so it's very very important that out of that we take our time and sit in this kind of gathering and remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so brother hakim abdul hakim jazakallah khair barakallahu feek inshallah and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless all of you jazakallah khair if you have any question inshallah i will answer jazakallah khair uh famous kami say jazakumullah khairan to our sheikh fadila to sheikh abdul hafiz muhammad abdul hafiz muntazir uh he has uh, really uh enlightened us upon the veil you know on everybody's faces to expose us to more knowledge on the the special night journey of uh, the journey of uh, isra wa miraj we want to thank ustaz uh, sheikh our brother part of us in jamaat wa alilahi uh like i said from the introduction even from last part we started uh gathering in nottingham as a salatu program since uh, 14th of february 2010 14th of february 2010 so every valentines day is a ceremony day for all <laughs> so in nottingham when we celebrate on 14th of february is beyond uh, valentine so our valentine is our asalatu 
Uh-huh. After last week was Valentine. Because that was the day we started our garden. And he has always been with us, assisting us, supporting us, especially in the area of our children. Now, when we are not, we are benefiting. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to increase him in knowledge, uh, continue to increase him in wisdom, uh, grant him good health, and accept all his good deeds on earth, and reward him with the best in the world and the year after. Uh, can we all point our Atta'iya finger to him? Atta'iya finger. That's a special finger, especially for people who pray. So that's one of our brother died in Nottingham. And uh, from the report, he was in this state when he died. Yeah, one of our brothers died, and he was in this state when he died. So, so you know, that's, that tells you how important this finger is. So if somebody died in this state, you should know he must be doing something. Huh? He must be doing something. And it's not that he's saying your head is not correct. Yeah? He must be doing something. And that is the theory. So that finger is very important to us. Yes, blessing is this finger. So can we all point this uh, blessed finger to him and say, Wallahi ha khiratu laka Wala sofa, Yotika, Rokuka, Patorino, Wala Yasimuka, Minanas, Wala Yasimuka, Minanas, Wala Yasimuka, Minanas, Alafata, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Arhaman Rahim, Malik Yawbidi, Yaka Abu Wayaka Sahi, I have a comment from someone on the Facebook, and I'm going to read that out. I have a lot of comments, but this comment quickly draw my attention. And this person, I don't know, he, he, he you know, joined us on this program, and he learned a lot, and he said, Masha'Allah, Sheikh Muhammad Muqtazim is a very knowledgeable scholar. I am waiting to listen to his speech. I think this person came late. <laughs> so I will advise this person, Toha Kodwe, to please, uh, after this program, go on our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel and watch this program again from the start because he has just finished the, the lecture. But we'll be taking questions and answers before I ask my own questions. Yeah, I like to ask questions when it comes to this, uh, so that we can refresh our memory. We will know that the people are actually following us, you know, especially when we are doing things like this, people talk, you know. When you come and please let me let me really draw our attention to this. Whenever there's a lecture going on and you come to a salatu, maybe you come maybe or something, don't bother to greet me. Okay. No, don't, don't greet anybody. Just go and sit down and listen. So when we don't finish, we can greet ourselves yeah, generally. So uh, when I used to work in uh, Nigeria, I have a boss. This is my boss is very, very humble. Very, very humble. He's very, very rich, but he likes to be with his workers. And um, when you are doing late, or even if you come on time, and you stand by the door and put his hand like that, for your boss, you will come and say, ah, good answer. You will not answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Come on, go. He said, oh, Kela Rani. So, he said, oh, Kela Rani. 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 He said, So, you are paid to work. You are not paid to come and visit me. So, to my father, you give me my dog. Go, go, guys. I can't tell my loss here. He's very, very humble. So, yeah. And I started emulating that, even from when I was young. I don't care if you don't do it. Doesn't make 
me to think you are not greeting me. So, but because greetings sometimes become distractions. So, what we are doing. So, inshallah, we will take questions first. We will not ask you our question. Hmm? Uh -huh. And I'm sure all the all our boys there and girls follow this program very well. So they can help you mothers if you don't know the answer. So your children will help you. So questions from okay, this is this one. I've got two questions. Um, the first one is before the professor and I went to make the journey, the life journey, what was the act of worship then? Because you said it was when he got there that Allah revealed the salah to him. So what was he doing as an act of worship before he accepted the salah? The second question is, the second question is, when you were listing all the prophets that you met when they got accepted, the prophet Isa, the salah was also among, because I was thinking he was he's meant to be among the six prophets that would say salah to him when he got to the heaven. So I'm thinking it was Isa, Isa, Isa yeah. You, you didn't mention him. Oh, yes, Isa was there as well. Okay, yes, so in the second one, I think. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, the the prayer, you know, the, they were praying, but it wasn't obligatory prayer. Right. It's formally obligatory. Became, and it's not five times they okay. were praying accordingly. And uh, after this, the Prophet ﷺ made five times in the days. It was given five times only. Then, of course, the Prophet ﷺ showed how to pray and what is the details came from the Prophet, peace be upon him. From that journey became obligatory the prayers and the direction of the Quran. From the last point, I think I, 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 I missed that one as well. That why the journey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could take the Prophet from Makkah directly to the seven heaven. Why to Masjid al-Aqsa? That is a very, very important question for us. The first reason is that the Masjid al-Aqsa was our Qibla, direction for the Kaaba, uh, before the uh, Hijra, because uh, some says three years before, 18 months, whatever you say, at least 18 months, we, the Muslim faced the Masjid al-Aqsa, then in uh, Medina as well, at least 16 months they faced to uh, Masjid al-Aqsa as well. This is the reason. And the other is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went there, Allah took him to Masjid al-Aqsa to show us the importance of the Masjid al-Aqsa. That this belongs to the Muslims. If the countries and the people wants to divide. No, no, this is belongs to the Palestinian people of Palestine, people of Jerusalem, whatever is not true. This masjid belongs to all Muslims in this world. So this is one of the reasons the journey was from there as well. Yes. Any more question? Question before we ask our question. Yeah. To ensure you actually follow the program. Any more questions? Fine. From boys, from men, from girls, thanks. From moms, from aunties. Okay, no question. So, so what's question? So what do you have questions? You you have questions. Mm, okay. I, have, I have a lot of questions. But I will not ask too much. Don't run away because of questions. Eh? Uh, why is it that uh, uh, people started to go out after I uh, have every question about some right? Okay. okay. I won't ask too much questions, but I just want to be sure that you actually follow us. And again, I would like to be bombarded with questions again, especially on what you've been taught. Mm -hmm. As, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu sometimes, it's good to have a question, but sometimes there are some questions in this land that are regarded as maybe like foolish questions. The people of Mosa and Salat was Salat, they have too many questions. You know, everything is question, 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 questions. So it becomes it become frustrating. And everybody, as human, you can get frustrated with questions, especially when you keep telling people the same thing all the time and they keep asking the same. It's like they are not listening to you. So, what's the waste of time? 
Okay. So, so, so now, it's so, so, so. right. We just listen to the question from uh, our uh, uh, Sheikh. When, when the Prophet Allah 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 went to visit Allah, he got the invitation. You cannot just go to somebody's house without invitation. Hmm? So Allah invited them for a visit. And when you go to visit people, you normally give them gifts or they give you gifts back. What was the gift that Allah gave to the Prophet when he was going? Oh, they were looking at better. Oh, yeah, you go first. Yeah, you go first. What was the gift? So Allah, so Allah. That was the tool that Allah gave to the Prophet. Oh, yeah, back in Jerry. If I come to your house now, you'll be giving me food. Eh, eh, papa, you eh, papa, you eh, eh, you give me Quran. Allah gave him, eh, what? So now, okay, part B of that question. And I want the answer to come from the first, the person that answered the first question, because there are two parts. The prophet got two gifts, that's the gift of Allah. So, so when they got to Mosque that so after the prayer, and they were about to go to heaven, Prophet Jibril alayhi salatu wa salam offered the Prophet two gifts, two gifts, and out of these two gifts, Prophet took one. What was the two gift, and which one does the Prophet take? The first one was uh, the orange or something. The first one was the white. Apple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> orange or purple. Okay. Well, wine and milk. Wine and milk. And which one did you take? Yeah. Which one did you take? It took the milk. Okay. Uh, I will still ask. I will continue with my question. So let's say thank you. There's not too much time after I will ask. Thank you. There's not too much time, right? So it took one. Milk. Uh huh. Which one did you take? Only the purple. Everybody put up. Thank you very much for that uh, beautiful answer. It means you are listening. Okay, now, question two. I won't ask a hard question. I have hard questions, but I won't ask. The second question Why? Why did Allah took the prophet of this church? Why? You know, he was taken on this journey, he was invited to come for a reason. But something must have been happening to him. You know, was it disturbed? Was there any problem with him? Why did Allah? Is it just to visit him to take the prayer or there was something? Why? Can somebody tell me the reason why he was uh, invited? Anybody? <laughs> Why? The children, anybody can answer. You can help your parents. Why did he go on? Why did he go on the journey? Any children, if you don't answer the question, you boys, you won't eat. Oh, yeah, speak up. To comfort him. Yeah, a lot of things happen. His wife died. Hatida. What happened again? His uncle. His uncle died. What happened again? Huh? No, that was long time. Huh? Karma? Hmm? Say it. Say it. Try. His wife. Grandfather. Grandfather died long time ago. What happened again? Aisha? Uncle. Long, long, okay. Uncle died. I, the wife died. We got that correct. He, 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 he got, he's been maltreated by the, uh, the, the Christ. And he went to Toys to preach to them. And they maltreated them. They sent even some children to school them. You know? And Toys was the first place he started his dawah. And it was the last place, you know, he had that his dawah. So, so basically, the people in Toy, they don't accept him. They stole him. They had the children to stole him. 
And can somebody remember what happened when he does stone? When he does stone, okay, Imran? It was what? Feeding. Feeding? He was bleeding. Yes, yes, I know he was bleeding. Then somebody came to him. Somebody came to him to ask him something. Let me help you. Yes. Yes, thank you very much, Imran. You know, the agent came up. The agent came down to ask him. You know, the angel came up. Angel Jibril came up and asked the prophet, just tell me what you want to do. Eh? Some people from, from, from one wire, from one uh, message, they said, the, the angel told him, you know, it's only two pillars that hold the whole of toy. Just tell me and I bring those pillars down now and the toy should demolish. And from what our teacher says, it says there's a mountain in that whole toy. If I don't bring that mountain now, the whole toy will perish. But the prophet says, no, no, no. Even if they don't accept Islam from me, what about their great offspring, their children, their grandchildren? Maybe they might accept Islam in the future. Don't let us destroy them. Otherwise, if the prophet says, yes, please destroy them, they will have destroyed toy people. So, and that is why our teacher was saying to us that whatever happens to us, we should not get angry and destroy things. It happens a lot, especially from our women nowadays. Well, maybe I will now it to Nigerian and Yoruba women. When they are fighting, they fight to their nail. They use all the secrets. Eh? The secrets, not the little one I want. They will use it against each other, thinking the fight is not going to finish. And when the fight finishes, can you retract those secrets again? Some, some people will even go to the extent, maybe of going to her husband and telling her husband whatever secrets he has. She will lose her husband. The fight will begin. You have not become a friend. She has already lost the husband. That's for poor mostly in Yoruba Nigerian women. Go on Facebook. You will see all them there. They say they have Facebook fracas. They talk about slamming themselves. Though some of the men now they have descended so low to join them in the league. Go to Facebook, you will even see people that we call our scholars. People we should be following. They are on the Facebook now. Every, every scholar now have a Facebook in Nigeria, especially in Instead of them to be there, to disseminate information of Allah, to take us to the way of Allah, they are there to slander each other. One of our sheikhs is seriously sick in Nigeria. May Allah grant him good health. And you see people on the Facebook praying for him to die. And they call themselves scholars. So this is not Islam. You cannot say you are a follower of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and wish your fellow brother, Muslim, if you can wish your Muslim brothers death, what would you wish those who are not Muslim? And the Prophet is not like this. Our prophet, even the, the story of a Jewish woman who normally rubbish on his way, broken bottle and stuff on his way. When the prophet didn't see this thing for three days, he asked about her and he said she was sick. And he went to say hello to her. When well, they were carrying the corpse, and the prophet was sitting with the Sahaba, he stood up for this corpse. And the Sahaba, the follower, the, the, his friends, his followers, they ask him, Don't you know that that dead person is not a non believer? He's not a Muslim. The prophet said, Yes, I'm not standing up because of him, I'm standing up for the owner of his soul. So, if we give respect to people, he doesn't have to be Muslim alone. We have to be care. We have to be, you know, to, to seek welfare of people around us, our neighbors, whether Muslims, Christian, who anything. 
Now we are all crying for Ukrainians. Most of them are now Muslim, majority. But the whole world is crying for them. Even the Muslim now they started launching, you know, a, a means of supporting the people affected by war, giving them clothes, giving them food now. So it's not just about being a Muslim before we can support each other. Don't let us fight to finish. Even myself sitting here, I've had people who force me to finish. Ah, I like that thing about back and there's nothing happening. How can you have a misunderstanding with your fellow brother over the end of Islam? Won't you? It's not even a personal thing, it's just like, I will finish and finish that and like that thing is nothing now. Over the end, over Islam. But today, they have regretted their actions. The shame will not let them come back, even though I've forgiven them. Because they know the gravity of what they have done for them to come back. I'm even begging them now to, don't worry, come back. But they cannot, because of what they have done. They know what they have done. This is what I used to tell you that I like you could forget, you forget things too easily. Don't you, don't you remember when they do it? I said, don't, don't worry, let's forget it, let's settle this thing. Aleja, who will have his understanding, but fight on what the cause, the main cause, not extending it to what doesn't happen or whatever must have happened to bring you in the past. If you call ourselves Muslims, we should emulate the way of Allah, we should emulate the way of the Prophet. Okay? I don't want to ask too many questions because. Uh, if I start putting money down now, I might give to be a bucket, uh, a bowl of food. So if you miss my question, you won't eat. So I can have all the food to myself. A lot of food. teacher. I want to use this opportunity again to appreciate every one of you. You know, only the ingrates will not appreciate you, especially our members from Gabi. Okay? I want to appreciate you for traveling all that far, even though it's not far, it's just 30 minutes journey. In London, people live in the same London, they travel one hour to Asalati. Okay? But if I want to appreciate anybody, I will appreciate you more. Okay? Then my appreciation will now go back to the Nottingham people. So the Nottingham people, for your consistency, you know, for not forsaking me, for not looking at my shortcomings and uh, overacting. To handle this microphone, if I want to test, I will ask you to handle the microphone for one hour, but I will wish you off. So if that is what we are looking for, I'm a machine, I will do you money. You want to talk for one hour without making a mistake? You don't look back. So, for all of you, I have to go to the house. 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 So, but don't look at that. Look at Islam in me. And for standing by me all this while, from 2010, I will say, Jazak Khaira. Even for those of you that are not here today, I'm extending my gratitude to all of you for your support towards the cause of Allah. Not me, because they are not supporting me. They are not supporting my family. Shuma for supporting Islam in our community. So that we can take that by law. Our mom will be in the law. All of our everyday all of your bad day. I mean, no, we can be back with as I have to come back. In fact, how they be? The coast, left. Nowhere to go. Monday to Friday, we walk. Saturday, we walk. Sunday, we do that time. But nowhere to go. The spare time you have, after not tell anyone, they were not church. I remember when they brought us as a lot of message when I said, Is it great to walk? It's not enough.
We took it up. Some of us then. But today, on the English, they say, Deba. Talk about lockdown. I want to go to Deba. So, all we are doing is for our next generation. So that I have a lot of people who should 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 have a lot of o <laughs> Who are in Ukraine, Kashmir, Afghanistan, uh, Syria, Yemen, every place that have been affected by oppression, by war, by 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 uh, eruption of the heart, like disasters. May Allah subhanahu wa taala comfort them. May Allah subhanahu wa taala comfort them and grant us peace in the whole world. The issue of Ukraine and Russia should not lead to world war. Inshallah, Rahman. And may Allah put an end to all these uh, uh, unforeseen, unpleasant situations we find ourselves. Yeah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the healer. Eh? We ask Allah to grant healing to, to, to those who are sick. We use this opportunity to pray for our brother, Aladi Kazim, uh, Abdel Karim. He had a minor operation. Uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore uh, good health come to him so that he can come to us as soon as possible. And some, some other people who call me and say, I'm sick, I have this and that. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got them shifa. Uh, and when Allah did grant them healing, he should not return uh, the sickness back onto every one of us. Uh, uh, we pray for our familiar to share our father in Nigeria who created this platform, this opera for us. Our familiar to share, our life, but it has keep on it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him good health, long life, and uh, more grace to spend in the cause of Allah. We go on our path, our path, all our children will become great in life, they will become meaningful in the society. Go everywhere they go, inshallah, they will see the mercy of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to shield us against any uh, atrocities, against any misfortune. And we pray for our country, Nigeria. May Nigeria become blessed again. Nigeria is a blessed country. May Allah continue to bless us. Allah, 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 Allah. We speak like now to you. We are blessed. Thank you. Jazakallah khairan to all of our listeners who want to hear this program on social media. Thank you very much. Thank you.